So welcome to week five um, and to our Ask Mark session um, for this week. As always, there are four questions that have been selected by the mentors. But the first question this week is really a, um, it's a sort of a um, collection of questions. I'll, I'll read them to you quickly and then I'll tell you what I'm going to do about them. Um, it says, firstly, do you have an opinion on how mindfulness and its formal practice of meditation might affect the usual way that the mind works, especially with relation to thinking? Secondly, it says, how do you see the practice of mindfulness affecting the mind, each of the four aspects that you've taught us the last four weeks? And then thirdly, it says, I'm not easily swayed by a lack of scientific evidence, but my subjective experience of mindfulness means the evidence must be there somewhere. Hence a follow-up question. From a scientific perspective, have convincing neurological correlates been found? Now, I hope you can see that I can't possibly answer such a complicated uh, net of questions um, in just a few minutes. The topic of mindfulness is a gigantic one. Um, and in fact, the, the, the mindfulness practices cover a great many different uh, things. Um, there are many different mindfulness interventions. And so the evidence, of, and there is evidence, um, as to what um, happens in the brain uh, in relation to these various mindfulness uh, uh, techniques. Um, uh, it's, it's impossible to summarize it without going in detail through the different aspects of mindfulness. Um, and the evidence uh, is quite different depending on uh, how the technique is being used. So um, I would just want to say, you may be surprised uh, to hear this. I myself did a brain imaging study on mindfulness a few years ago, um, together with Victoria Eves de la Pieri. Um, uh, but since then, there's been a, a, a plethora of work. Um, there was a special um, issue of the journal SCAN, S-C-A-N, which is an acronym for Social Cognition and Affective Neuroscience. They devoted a special issue to um, the uh, neuroscientific evidence about what happens in the brain during mindfulness. And this evidence was all summarized in a very good article, uh, which I'm going to post. So look on the site and uh, read the article, um, and you'll see um, a, a comprehensive summary of what we know about what happens in the brain during mindfulness. It's a very interesting topic. Um, the... Um, I, I'm sort of tempted to, here I will, I'll, I'll, I'll give you just one generalization, um, uh, 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 which is probably unwise, which is that in the, in the brain, um, in the forebrain, um, the medial surfaces, the midline structures, um, represent uh, 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 self-related processes, and the convexity of the forebrain uh, represents more the state of the outside world. Uh, that midline structure um, is, um, generally speaking, uh, uh, referred to as uh, the default mode network, uh, the sort of resting state um, of the brain. And uh, these external uh, surfaces um, are involved with various other networks like the attentional network, the semantic network, the executive network, and so on. These all relate to external things. And if I can make one generalization about mindfulness, um, is that it's a change in the relationship between these two aspects of cortical activity. Changes in complex ways, that's why I can't summarize all the evidence that goes in both directions. Um, not only functionally, but also in terms of connectivity, and also in terms of actual structural changes. Um, in experienced mindfulness practitioners, there are parts of the brain which become thicker, uh, parts of the brain which become thinner. I'm speaking of cortical um, uh, 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 layers, and um, it's really ex extremely interesting. So do please look at the article that I've posted, the link that I've posted, and then you'll get a, a fuller answer.